All right, so now let's get right to it. And let's talk about what we need to do to pass the next test case. So what we're asking you to do is modify the way that the items in the list are displayed so that the cuisine value is shown. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm gonna walk you through what I think is a good way. Um, but there are some other ways and you can you might find one that works uh, makes more sense to you and that's totally cool. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna open up um, models.kt and hope that things are still hidden. Okay, good. So your restaurant model has these two fields so far, as a name and a cuisine. And the idea here is that when you use this dot notation in this um, in this uh, item not uh, item underscore restaurant XML, it essentially works like a getter, right? It retrieves the value for that property. Now in Kotlin, it's a little interesting because there is no getter, right? You get a getter automatically when you create, in this case, a variable. But we can also uh, add what's called like a pseudo property, right? So if I create something on my model, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create an instance method called get full name and I'll return hello world and I should really I need to mark this as returning a string okay um, so now because I have this method that has a getter that looks like a property um, when I go over here to item restaurant I can actually put in full uh, it should yeah it's gonna uh, auto complete it for me I can I can put in full name it returns a string and that'll set the text value so now what's gonna happen when I run the app is you'll see that Rather than showing the name, all the items will show hello world. It's a very friendly application. Uh, not super useful if you're looking for restaurants, but friendly. Um, so let's run it again. We'll see that this works. Uh, and then I will leave it to you to kind of finish the job, right? So what you need to do is figure out how to display both the name and the cuisine of the restaurant for each item in the list, right? And like I said, there's multiple ways to do this. You could do this by combining them together right here if you want to look into how to do that, um, or you can write this pseudo getter that does the right thing. Uh, and now you'll see again, my very friendly restaurant. Okay, a very friendly app. Um, all right, so good luck on this. Uh, this is another one of you know the, the test cases that doesn't require really writing a lot of code, but there's a fair amount of conceptual machinery going on here um, to get you to that point, right? Uh, and, and so, you know, don't, and, and to be honest, that's a normal part of software creation particularly when you work on a large team on a large project, there'll be times when someone's gonna ask you to make some small change to something and you shouldn't spend hours and hours, days and days, weeks and weeks trying to understand every piece of code that's around it because that's just sort of a distraction from your real goal, which is just to fix the problem, right? So, so sometimes you, know, you need to be able to work with unfamiliar code in sort of an uncertain environment in order to make changes that are small and you might understand the change you're making, but you might not understand everything that surrounds it, right? And that's okay, as you work on projects for longer, you'll touch more parts of them and you'll figure out more about what's going on. And the same thing's gonna happen with the MP. Um, but you know, the ability to work under uncertainty, I think is tremendously important. I find myself doing that a lot, particularly when I work with other people. You know, I mean, you might be making some small fix to something that somebody wrote, and they've been working on it for years and I've been working on it for days and I'm just gonna make this one change and we're gonna make sure everything works and write some test cases and everyone's gonna be happy. But you know, I've improved it a little bit, but I certainly don't understand how everything works. Uh, so good luck with this. As always, if you need help, you know where to find us on the help site or on the forum.